Director of Player Development. And I have, do I have that correct? Correct, correct, correct. Gavin Morris and and Gavin. Gavin was was I mean I don't know how many years ago it is now, but you you invited me out to a B two G workout when uh, when Biggie Marshall was in eighth grade, the summer after Correct. his eighth grade, and Correct. and you know to think of where you know you you came from at that point to now, you know is a story in itself and a really good one. And just just talk about you know your your the road that you traveled to to get here. Where did you start and and how did you end up getting connected with USC? <laughs> you know what? It's been a long journey. Um, I've, uh, I'm blessed. You know what I'm I mean, I, I count my blessings every morning when I wake up to, you know, be able to work for USC because it was a dream. Um, but, you know, I, I started off, I tell, I tell kids all the time, I was, I was a guy to check people in. Uh, you know, my first, I never forget, I, I just moved from Atlanta to, to LA and one of my buddies, uh, Courtney Morgan, director of player development. I mean, director of player personnel at Fresno. Shout out to Court, Big Court. Uh, he was sitting on my couch and he was. He said, "He said, Gab, you want to come help me train some offensive linemen?" And uh, I had just moved to LA. I, I was, uh, you know, in between jobs, and I was like, you know, I can do that on the weekend. And uh, the, the two players that we started training were Nico Fala and Jordan Simmons. And, um, you mm. know, uh, and I was a guy, you know, I, I just wanted to be, you know, I've always been in, uh, been in sports. Uh, I used to work in the front office for the Braves, I used to work front office for NASCAR. So I've always been in sports. And I was always uh, looking to get back into sports. And, you know, he invited me out and first job, you know, I, you know, basically I started from the bottom. I, I would check people in and, uh, how, you know, me, it, it's a blessing looking back that I was, be able, I was, that I was checking people in because I got to meet a lot of, uh, young players that end up being, you know, four or five stars, their parents. And I was able to start building relationships and, you know, I, I, I made my own lane. Uh, with B2G, I, I, you know, I, I, B2G, one of the forefathers of, of 7 on 7. Uh, yep. Shout out to Ron and Henry, uh, uh, the forefathers of, of, of 7 on 7 football on the West Coast. Uh, I mean, now you look at, you know, like Ground Zero and, and uh, 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 Premium, other, uh, premium uh, EA Sports with Jeff. Uh, they, we all were at B2G. I mean, when you talk about a talent, of players that were B2G, but just look at from the trainers, coaches that were at B2G. I mean, it, it's, it was the best of the best. Um, and, you know, I worked my way up and, um, you know, people think I, I, I applied for USC about two times and got turned down um, both times. And, and the third time, uh, uh, Eric Zissel just was leaving USC and I, I'll never forget, Sark called me and he said, you know, he wanted me to interview for the job. And I, I never forget, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an emotional person, but I was driving to SC, I was crying. You know, I mean, this, is, this, is, this was my dream job. You know, outside, maybe working for the Lakers. I mean, USC and the Lakers, that's, I tell Clay all the time, that's the only place I leave them for is the Lakers. So, you know, I, and I told him, we met Gene last year, I said, hey, I, I only I only leave one place. I only leave USC for one place. It'd be the Lakers, and uh, I'm still waiting on that call. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> but you know, I, I was blessed. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian, you know, he believed in me, and uh, you know, the rest is history. And uh, you know, it, it's a blessing every day. I don't I don't take it for granted. I don't, you know, every every day I, I give the same energy as I did my first day. And people understand when I first got hired, I'm a little older. So when I got hired, it was a lot of student work. Like my, my, my desk area was with the student workers and people thought I was a student and they thought I was like a volunteer or I, I don't. <laughs> so, you know, it, it was, it was a transition from where I started to where I am now. But, you know, the, the main thing is I got that same energy and I got the, I'm always trying to, I'm a competitor. So, Every day I'm trying to be the, you know, be the best and 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 be the best and make USC the best. 
So that's my dream. I mean, I, I'm not going to stop till we get a championship. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's my goal to everybody. You know, I'm like, I'm from LA. So I bleed this, you know, my family got a statue on campus. You know, a lot of my friends, families went to USC. So it's not, to me, it, it, it is a job, but it's more than a job. And uh, I got a lot of city pride. I'm, you know, I'm from LA, grew up probably 10 minutes away from USC. So all I want to do is be able to put a championship and, 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 and have a parade going down Figueroa. So, you know, that's, that's the goal. When you, when you, when you, when you did first start at USC, um, what, what was the role that you, that, that, you know, that you had? And it was recruiting. I mean, I mean, obviously. <laughs> I was but, a, I was, I was a recruiting analyst. I don't right. even know if they have that position anymore. Uh, yeah. I was, I was probably a glorified student worker. I broke down a lot of tapes, took, did board tags. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, now, you know, at that time we only had uh, probably three full-time people in, uh, in recruiting and, you know, a lot of student workers. And, and it's funny, a lot of my student workers that, 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 that you know, work with us, you know, they're, they're now working in professional, uh, you know, working in, in professional sports. But I mean, I, I was, I was the bottom. I mean, and my thing is, I did whatever, whatever, whatever Sark wanted, whatever the coaches wanted. I mean, I did, you know, I paid mm -hmm. my dues and I, you know, and the thing is when you pay your dues, you learn the ropes. I learned college football. I learned the ins and outs. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I just, I, one thing I learned is you treat people right, you know, people go treat you right and they're going to take care of you. And, uh, you know, I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, Scott, because you know where I came from. Yes. My last question before all, before I know these guys got some good questions to ask you, but uh, mm -hmm. who was the first big time recruit that you called and got ultimately got the first one uh i had a little something to do with with with, with iman marshall um that's my brother but i was probably jack jack um mm. jack jack was probably jack jack ej mm -hmm. price uh you know ej price would what made ej price was that was my first time ever dealing with the SEC. And I wasn't 100%. It was me and T. Martin. Uh, yeah. You know, and, you know, I learned a lot. You know, I'd never gone up recruiting against the SEC. And, you know, I learned a lot from T. You know, T taught me the ropes. And, and uh, uh, so, but Jack Jack, Jack Jack was probably the biggest one. I mean, and, mm. and uh, you know, he's a special player. And, uh uh, I wish him nothing but the you know best of luck. Um, but yeah, that year it was EJ Jack Jack. I'm trying to think. That was that was EJ Jack Jack. Yeah, that was probably. That was, I don't think those. I don't think it, it might have been Bubba. Bubba was in that. Was Bubba in that year? I get all the years confused. No. Well, I mean, Bubba I, I'm the same after. way. I'm, the, I'm like I'm this last three weeks. I don't know. I I can't remember what, even where I've been one day or the next. But but. Uh, Bubble was a little bit after. Bubble was 2017, wasn't he? Yeah, he might have been. He might Hunter been. Eccles, class. Hunter, I was I was heavily involved with Hunter, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, I mean, I, I've been I've been blessed to, to be able to you know. And my thing is, I'm I'm not the coach, so you know I do a lot of support role, um, and, and, and a lot of times people try to give me credit for stuff. But it's a lot of people always involved in the recruitment mm -hmm. that, that never get the credit. Um, yeah. You know, not one person just recruits a kid. And even when, you know, it's maybe one or two kids, it's always people behind the scenes that are always making it, especially our student workers, our, our, <laughs> our, our video, our, our, our um, you know, graphics people, uh, our per player personnel people. Uh, I mean, everybody. Have you met everybody that's been hired this year? <laughs> it's been, it's been, you know, been a good I number of met, people. I just met two. I just met two new people today. Uh, I can't tell you everybody's names. Uh, <laughs> I'm bad with names, but uh, I, I met I met uh, Will Will and Jacob yeah. today 
for the first time. Seem like great people. <coughs> um, I know they go they go bring great value to SC. I think those guys are superstars, um, riding superstars. Uh, we're blessed to have them. I mean, we're blessed to have them. Yeah, I mean that no that was that that was like signing three five stars, especially with the image and likeness coming up. Right. Um, I think oh, these yeah. guys would be able to take 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 it to the next level and help kids build their brand, um, and also help USC build their brand. Right, that's yeah. something big, and I'm glad y'all you you brought that up, and that's something that's at the the front. Hey, of y'all. thank my man, thank my man Spencer, and, and I know y'all talked to Brandon and, and Mike. Thank the thank Spencer, Mike, Brandon, because they make that happen. You know that that was they made that happen. No doubt. And you know, you talked about the energy you bring in. You know, I I think most real USC fans are are familiar with your name and the energy you bring, especially when it comes to recruiting. But we talk about the energy with this new coaching staff that's in the building on the defensive side, man. And and we already know what was going on with the offense and the numbers last year. But tell us, because you've been in the room with these guys, what's it like now that you got, you know, that new vibe going at SC? Man, they pit bulls. (laughs) I mean, you know, Dante, Orlando, I mean, Craig, Craig, (laughs) Craig, Craig different now in a pot, in a great, in a good way. Uh, I mean, Vic, I mean, it, it's different, and it's, and let me just tell you something. You know, the, the the it's a lot of great things about my jobs. A lot of great things about working in college sports. The worst thing about working in sports is that it is a lot of turnover, and right. you build relationships with people uh, and their families, and things happen that are out of people's control, and new people come in, but that doesn't mean that. The people that left didn't do a good job or didn't bring the energy, you know. Um, it's just, it's a business, um, right. but this new group is different. Right. I mean, they 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 pit bulls. <clears throat> they, 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 they're go getters. They 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 they're 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 aggressive, and I think in the in the, in in this new era, because the recruiting changes year by year by year by year. Right. I mean, I I, I can tell you how we recruited. Six years ago is not how you're recruiting right now. Yeah. And we're, I'm adapting. Everybody's adapting. But these guys, they bring a lot of expertise. Uh, they play, they've all been at big-time programs. They've all recruited at big-time programs. I can only speak on the recruiting part. I'm not a coach, so I can't speak on X and O's. But from the recruiting side, the energy, uh, I mean, just they, – they, they, it's just it's, – it's, 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 it's different. And, you know, and they're, and they're genuine, you know, it's not, you know, sometimes a lot of these people in this business, they use car salesmen, you know, and, and they selling dreams, they selling, you know, jerseys, shoes, they selling all the stuff that really doesn't matter. Um, these guys are genuine, you know, they genuinely want to help people, help the kids. Um, I think that a lot of times that's what gets lost in college football. You know, a lot of these coaches are making a lot of money. A lot of money. I'm not making that, but they making that. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, college football becomes about money. You know, you got some coaches making hundred million dollars. You know, and then you got kids coming from poor backgrounds. So, you know, it gets lost. But these guys are genuine. They really care about the kids. They care about life after football, which is so important because not everybody's gonna make it in football, but it's not just about football. They don't look at, at these players just as football players. Well, a lot of these, you know, some some schools, I'm not saying everybody, but some schools, you, you're just a football player. You know, you num- jersey number 10 or 11 or whatever your jersey number is, and you're not that person because not everybody's going to make it. Right. Yeah, right. How, how many hours a week do you put in? And, and in those hours, how much of it is just relationship building and listening, especially with, you know, in light of what's going on right now, uh, it's it's twenty four seven. I mean, I you know I. Well, well you know, it's a it's a running jo- it's a running joke. I don't have an office. Exactly. Uh, you know, my office and my two phones. Uh, actually, one phone, my work phone. Uh, but uh, you know, 
that's my office and it never stops. Um, I think some of my best recruiting is at home. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably sitting in this exact seat. Um, and, you know, it's not, it's, it's what people, people see the outcomes of recruiting. They see the commit or, you, you know, they see people, the player commit, but they don't see the hours that go into it. You know, the, the sitting on the phone or, or dealing with the kid when he's going through, you know, he got a bad grade, you got to cheer him up or a family member died and you got to be there for him or somebody's sick. A lot of recruiting is teaching these young kids about life and, you know, especially like right now, like, right. I'm not even recruiting right now. I'm, I'm talking yeah. to my recruits and my players. We talking about real life issues. What's going on in the real world? It ain't about recruiting. Because, you know, I tell them right now, there's bigger stuff than football right now. And and it's being there for the kids. So, you know, it's always. My phone's 24-7. Any of my players, any of my recruits uh, can call me. And, 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 and I think that's what makes me successful is – is being genuine and always being there for the kids, and and because like I said, you can sell. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a used car salesman. I, I, if I was a car salesman, I probably couldn't sell a car, you know. But being real and being genuine with the kids and and telling them about life and telling them in the next three four years what they're about to face. Because I've walked in those shoes. I'm a little older, so I've been in those shoes. I've been 20. I've been 21. I've been a young black male. Uh, trying to find themselves in this world it's difficult um and 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 just telling can even you're not black white poly doesn't matter being young and not knowing where your future i mean it's easy when you're first round drafted you go into the team to draft okay but what if you don't get drafted mm. how, how do you how are you there for those kids because those are the those are the lost voices that nobody hears you know, the kids that don't make it, you know, all the fans, all they care about, you know, a lot of fans, they care about recruiting, they care about touchdown. Okay, but what happens when those kids, after senior night, and they get their, you know, their uh, uh, their flowers and, and, and the lights go out, what happens? Those kids still, you know, we recruited them, we, we, we built relationships. You can't just kick them to the curb. You got to be there and help them transition from football, from college to the real world. Right. And the reason I was asking that, and, and especially in light of what's going on today, you touched on it real briefly, and I want to bring it back to it so you can explain who your uncle was when he played, because it was a similar time then, what's, what's going on now, and did your uncle tell you about those stories, and how are you able to relay that to today's players that you're talking to? Well, yeah, well, my, my, my two uncles, uh, uh, actually three, uh, is Bubba Scott, Willard B. Scott, uh, Al Collins, and Tony Smith. Uh, yeah, they, they tell me about the, uh, the they, when I was a kid, they used to tell me about the Alabama game. Um, and I don't know, if, I don't know if it was, I guess I could say it now. I don't know if it was Jimmy Gunn or Tony. They brought a gun on the plane. And, you know, because it was a lot of racial tensions at that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I never forget they telling me, you know, I, I forget who had the gun, but it, it, they were just fearful for their life. It, and they were saying the bus ride going to uh, to the stadium, uh, all the black employees, like at restaurants, came out of of the of their businesses to to clap for them and let them know that they were going for them. Um, mm-hmm. And at that time, Alabama had all white teams. Um, and that's the significance of the Alabama. That's the significance of Alabama USC rivalry. Is you know USC went down to to Alabama and, and, and beat Alabama, and you know this, I, I guess the, the, the legend is Bear Bryant walked in and said, you know we're going to start recruiting black players. The first next year, the first black player in the SEC uh, was on the team. Um, so they they tell me stories. Uh, you know, a lot of stories I probably can't tell right now. <laughs> you know, I've heard a lot of, lot of stories. I can uh, tell one. That I, I, I can tell one, but I, 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 we, I can't tell you on, uh, with us recording either. But my dad. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't go into the premium it. chat. People pay yeah. for it. Hold on. I can't. I, I can't. I, I've heard a lot of, uh, <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, they used to tell me, you know, youngster, you know, you think you're doing it big. We did it big. And, and remember, 
at that time, they were rock stars. Like they were, uh, you know, you know, those days were OJ, AC. But I mean, they were they were bigger than than life. Right. So, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of stories <laughs> that that yeah, we, we could you know we're drinking a beer or something. I, I can tell you some of those stories. Right, but it, it, you have something to fall back on because like you know those times are, are similar to what's what's being talked about right now. So when a player or a recruit says, "Hey, Gavin, you know what? This is this is what I'm feeling." You, you've got something to, to to pull from. Well, yeah, uh, I mean it's 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 the duty of a being it's a duty of me you know i always tell parents like i'm i'm always gonna be there for your kids right. and as a as a forget usc as a black man it's my duty to help not only my young african-americans and, and young players of color but even our non uh players of color um that's <laughs> my duty to give them to give them the game of life because i had i had older friends that taught me life and you know they always say the games to be told not so so my job is to teach them my life experience where, where i make mistakes at where some of my friends make mistakes at for them not to make those mistakes because if if, if somebody's breaking breaking down knowledge to you and you put it in your toolbox that's how you become powerful that's how you become more successful when you ain't making the same mistakes as other people's before you made it and 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 that's my job as a big brother, as as director of player development, as just being myself. I always want to help. I mean, I, that, that's just me. I'm I'm a helper, um, and, and I give a shirt off my back to, to anybody, uh, black, white, doesn't matter. I don't I don't I don't look at anybody as color. You know, I don't look at anybody in color, um, and that's the great thing. I mean, I, we just had a team meeting yesterday. I had about six, seven of the players call me. And just talk. And, and matter of fact, it's not me talking. I'm listening. I'm listening mm. to the pain that they're going through. I'm listening to the pain because everybody's dealing. I got, I got, I got players calling me that come from uh, uh, mixed backgrounds. They're black and they're white, and one side of their family is might not feel the same way as the other side of their family. So they're dealing with things. You know, they're they're black and they're they're mixed. Uh, and you, it's just being listening. And I, like I said, I don't have all the answers in life but i can just tell i, I can i tell my players what, what comes from my heart it, it, you know i might be wrong I'm, i might be right i can only thing i can do is tell you from my heart and and try to lead them in the right way so they didn't make the right decisions um no like i said i wanted i just wanted to draw the parallel you had touched on it so briefly but people might not know that you know you've got families that were family members who were a part of tra you know, Trojan tradition with a statue right outside of Heritage Hall. Um, no, so I, and, that, and that's why I, you know, I, it's not just a job to me. You right. know, this, this exactly. is more than a job. I, I, I mean, I, like I said, I don't, I don't take it for granted, um, you know, and it's, you know, I always say the people, you know, I tell all the coaches, I love y'all, but I got, you know, you know, Toady, Jimmy, Uncle Bub looking down from heaven. Um, you know, and I always want to make them proud. And 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 pr and by making them proud is always doing things the right way and, and trying to make USC uh the best football school there is. And uh, you know, I mean I, like I said, I'm a I'm I'm gonna give it my all and, and die trying and and like I said, I think we're going in the right way. We got great leadership uh, right now. Uh, Bre uh, you know, Brandon, uh, Mike. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's a it's a it's, it's it's different. It's different, you know. And it, and 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 when I say different, I don't ever want to put down who was there before, um, because like I said, can, I have can I we? got relationship. Huh? Can we? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't say. <laughs> The Constitution says you got free speech, so <laughs> I, I love everybody. I love them. You know what? All I, 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 I can only, ju this, I can though, only judge a man or woman how they treat me. So right. you know, and, and and I tell fans that some fans will come and they'll say something about a certain coach or something. I can't agree, and it, it's not you know because, like I said, I, I I deal with people how they treat me, and like I said, this is a business. When you start learning people's fans, and I'm not saying fans are wrong. 
But when you c come in my DM or you come in person and you want to talk bad about somebody, like I know these people's family, so I can't. I'm never going to. I'm not a fan. You know, this is this is real life. Um, right. And, and and you know, luckily we get you know we get taken care, we get paid accordingly to deal with the the, the outside noise. And like I said, we listen, you know, we hear it, and 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 the outside noise is my motivation. You know, um, that's my motivation, I, and that's why I love this fan base because they're passionate. You know, when when things aren't going right, they gonna let you know. Um, <laughs> they you let know, us and, know and, too. And, yeah, and, and that's what's great. That's what's great about America. Um, you got free, you got free speech. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes they go a little far, but you know, we're big boys. We can take it. But you know, as far as SC fans know, we're giving it our all, and I, I think you know, sometimes people, you know, there's a lot of things behind the scenes people just don't know about. But I know these coaches. From 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 our our student managers to our coaches to our trainers to our administration, everybody is all in, and we're trying to win a championship for USC. All right, so you have you have an entire new defensive staff. You kept some really really talented D, uh, offensive coaches. You added, but but that's all the byproduct of what happened in November, and mm -hmm. uh, you, and you talked about about Mike. Uh, Mike Bone and, and Brandon came on a little bit later, but you, you, really what had to happen, it seemingly at USC, is it had to all start at the bottom. The base had to be rebuilt. You know, you had to have you know, strong leadership, somebody who, and, and when, did, when did you start to believe that it wasn't all talk, you know, like, you know, fight on to victory? At one point, you know, some people were starting to make fun of that with Mike when he kept Clay Hilton as the head coach. But when did you start to realize that, man, this guy's uh, like this guy's gonna get stuff done? It, you know, I, one thing about I always give somebody a chance, you know. And uh, I, I'm gonna tell a funny story. Uh, the first day I met, I met uh, Mr. Mike Bone, uh, you know, he had his press conference, and uh, you know, I, I it, we, we're in the middle of recruiting, you know, the season. You know, people don't understand by the time you get to November, it, you know, it, middle of November, like we're on fumes. You know, you've been working basically from August 1st, seven days a week, nonstop. Uh, you know, you got recruiting visits, you got the season, games, you're traveling, <laughs> you know, you're not sleeping that much. So I, I was, you know, it was morning time. I had, I guess my, and usually I'm, I'm a bubbly guy, I bounce around. And I guess my, my energy was just low. And I, I go to introduce myself, I, you know, I said, you know, Mr. Bone, my name's Gavin Morris. He said, speak up, smile. Why are you not happy? <laughs> I'm looking at really? him like, I'm looking at him like, what's wrong with this guy? Like, like, <laughs> like is this real? Like, is he on, how many Red Bulls did he have before? Uh, yeah. But, you know, I, I got to learn, uh, we had a, we had a dinner, uh, that uh, our old um, our old uh, um, DP uh, everybody got titles. Sam, Sam Curtis, yes. Sam Curtis and Frosty Rucker and uh, Scott Wisniak, uh set up with former players. Uh, we sat down. It was about twenty former players, um, and Mike Bone was there, and he listened, and. I, I was just like, whoa, like, I don't think I'm, I don't think previous people would have gone to a dinner like this. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to a dinner and especially with former players, they, you know, former players, they don't, they don't hold back. You know, they go yeah. tell you how you feel, they go tell you <laughs> what's wrong, who's, who's to blame this, that, you know. So, was uh, Keyshawn oh, there? It, it, huh? <laughs> No, nah, he wasn't there. <laughs> they can turn on the radio to hear how he feels uh, every week. Uh, but, uh, you know, and Mike, he was listening. And, you know, it's just like now we're going through this, this difficult time. And he's listening. <clears throat> he's listening to our players. He's listening to our coaches. He's listening. He's listening. 
he's not just making decisions just just cuz he's listening he went to that dinner he listened and i said i and and i, I you know and I, I was sitting next to mike and this you know mike, I, mike we he just met me mike doesn't know me from from anybody you know and he asked, he's, you know, we talked, he told me, he asked, he said, Gavin, you know, tell me your story. Tell me your background. I told my story. And he said, well, you know, he said, you know, what, what can we do? And he asked the player what we do. And he said, well, I'm going to do it. And I never forget the next week. He started asking me, so what are we doing about what we talked about at the dinner? I'm like, whoa. Damn. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's when I knew he was serious. Mm -hmm. And it was you know, I was trying to tell recruits and people like, yo, this guy's different. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. And everybody kept saying, Gab, you drink it. I said, I know I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, but this is the cool flavor you want to drink, you know? And, man, and then, of course, Brandon came in and the leadership, you know, it, it's, they're not, it, it's not, it's, it's not, they're not talkers. They're about action. They're yeah. about getting stuff done. And those are my type of people. You know, because I'm judged by my results. And I think any business, when you especially when you're in sports, you got you judge by results. And they've they've done, I mean, they've they've gave us everything that we've needed to be successful. They've gone they've gone above my expectations. And uh I really appreciate them. And uh uh, it's a breath of fresh air, and that's why you're seeing, you know, we got different people, but, the, you know, the, we, we can change all the coaches and stuff, but people just don't understand if uh, football is a well-oiled machine, and everybody got to be on the same page. So when administration's on the same page, football's on the same page, Recruiters gonna be on the same page because they know hand in hand, and you know I had I had a uh, a, a recruit's parent tell me like you know I didn't know about USC a year, year ago because I didn't know I thought you guys were about Pac-12 championships. He goes, they said now I see you're about national championship, and I, I've always been about national champion. I think we've all but when you're not all the way in. You know, like to win a championship, it's tough. You know, you got to be all the way in. You got to you gotta spend the money. It takes money to make money. And they're all the way in. And, yeah. and, and, and they're giving us nothing but support. I commend them. Uh, uh, you know, I, I can just let all SC fans know. And I, I, I don't need to say that. They know. We head in the right direction. You know, uh, Miss President Carol Folt made the right hire and Mike. And Brandon, and, and you know, Brandon's a superstar. So yes. I mean, I, I, I got nothing else. You know, he, he you know, we've he, already kissed his you know ass LeBron, enough. You know, when LeBron James walks on the floor, Brandon's a superstar. <laughs> you know, you know, we we've been talking about all the additions that USC's made. I, I want to ask you about a relationship you've had with somebody who's been there about as long as you have, and that's Clay Helton. You know, mm -hmm. he catches a lot of flack from fans. I honestly think it's unjust because, like you said, when things change up top and you start getting different support, you'll get different results. But I, I want to know what your relationship is like with Clay Hilton, because obviously y'all been together for a while now. Yeah, I've, I've known, you know, it's funny. I knew Clay before. I knew Clay's a quarterback coach. Uh, um, you know, he's, he's a great person. I've, I've learned a lot from Clay. I'm an emotional person. So, you know, I, I, you know, he always say, you know, before you press send on a tweet or something, you know, you know, always, always make sure would your mom accept, would your mom be okay with it? Would Clay, would Clay be okay? He, he even kill. He never gets too high, never gets too low. So I've learned a lot from him. Um, and he, he's a, he, he's a great man, you know. And a lot of stuff people don't know. Like a lot of one thing about Clay is not is not about Clay. Right. So he's never gonna make it about him. No, I know that for and, sure. And, man. and it's about the coaches, about the players. He's about pushing. I mean, even I never get, you know, his tree's growing. I mean, you start looking at people that have left SC, right. uh, his GAs. I think we got, you know, we got some GAs that in six months are going to be, you know, coaches. 
uh, with uh, Dane Stevens, Mike Hutch, Vianne, Lenny Vandeway. Uh, uh, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but these guys are, are th those are the next Chris Hawkins, Prentice Gills, uh, you know, of college football. Right. And he's, he's, he's about promoting them. Like, right. go find a job. Anything I can help. He, he's, right. a, he's selfless. Prentice, and he, me you know, me and, me huh? in this process. Prentice told me about how, how Clay looked out for him and that whole thing. A hundred percent. And, and, and you talk to, to any of people that have left um, SC, you know, they're going to tell you, like, I'm always pulling for Clay. And, he's a, you know, he's, he's a fighter. He fights in a different way. You know, he, he plays chess. You know, every move is right. calculated. Um, and, and, you know, I've learned a lot in life, a lot of life lessons um, from play. And, uh, you know, he, he's a great man. And, and, you know, some things happened like this weekend. Um, you know, he's probably get mad, but he was at, a, a, you know, Black Lives um, Matter uh, uh, rally uh, this weekend. He didn't have the videotapes and the, 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 the photographers. Some coaches have had that. Because it wasn't about, it wasn't about me being part. It, like he did it because that's what he wanted to do in his heart, right. you know. And and, and 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 I never forget one of our players' moms texted me and said, you know, like my heart just melted. I just saw Clay, you know, um, you know, at the rally, and uh, you know, nobody probably knows about this. I might get in trouble for it, but you know, I, I think the world needs to know his, where his heart's at. And, uh, you know, you just a great you man. And, and, and he's a great coach. Like I said, and he's a great coach. And people want to work for him, you know. A lot of times you see a lot of coaches leave certain coaches. It's not because a lot of times they want, like, <laughs> they, they want to have, you know, they don't want to be in the office 22 hours out of 24 hours a day, you know. You don't have to tell a story to get yourself in trouble. I, I said the exact same thing. I wrote about this just the other day. Gavin, you know, somebody asked me, you know, are you surprised that Clay Hilton hasn't put out a statement yet, you know, about the, you know, the, uh, the George Floyd situation? And I was like, no. Why, why does Clay Hilton, of all people, who is all about the faith family football, if you don't know who he is by now, just by his actions alone, him putting out a statement doesn't mean anything because honestly, who's going to remember those words tomorrow or two days later anyways? Um, so I mean, you just said that. And, you know, he doesn't need the cameras on behind him. No, nah, he, he's selfless. He he, and, and, and uh, you know, I've, I've, I've worked with him for a long time. It's an honor to work for him um, because he treats, he treats me – and he treats everybody with dignity and respect. And they're not, I, you know, I, I never forget. I'll tell you a funny recruiting story. We're coming from uh, Central California. It's, we just did a home visit. It's, we're two hours away from LA. And, uh, you know, it's about, we're leaving the house probably 12 o'clock at night. We got a two hour drive. I know my coach has been on, all across the country, different places. We're leaving the house at 12 o'clock. I said, coach, no, I'm driving. You know, I mean, that's my job, you know, that, that, hey, that's the boss. I got to make sure the boss is always safe. I said, coach, let me drive. And it was me and uh, I think at the time our defense coordinator uh, was with us. I said, let me drive, coach. Like, no, I want to drive, you know, because he drove down and I slept. So I'm like, coach, I got, I got some energy. And he said, no, I'm going to drive. And, you know, that's the type of person he is. He, 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 you know, most coaches, you know, you know, the lowest guy on the total pole, the, they driving the coach. The coach is going to be in the passenger seat. He's like, no, I'll drive. You know, all the time when he wants to go to a school to watch a football game, we always say, coach, let's get you a car service. He said, no, I'm going to drive. <laughs> you know, because it, it's – He's not, he's not a glitz, glamour type guy. He's just a good, <clears throat> down-to-earth person. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he is who he is. 
And that's why I respect them. I think, you know, when parents and, 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 and people and, and recruits sit down with them, they go, man, like he's such a great guy. And uh, it, it's, a, it's an honor to work for him. Right. And I think USC fans should have more of appreciation for the type of young man he's brought into the program and is continuing to, like you said, you, you guys have a relationship with these men past the point of and, USC. And, and, and the key is not just what he brings in, it's what he sends out, how they are when they leave. Exactly. And because that's the thing, his number one goal. I mean, I've no co- – I'm, I'm, I mean, football, they cut players. You know, uh, they cut players. They run you out. They, you know, certain – I mean, you can, Google, you can Google Coaches run players out. He doesn't do that. I've uh, seen him increase the rate of three-year degrees at USC. Oh, 100%. And, the, and, the, and he's not doing that to get them out of school. He's getting that no, so, they, so they leave with their masters. Opportunities. Yeah. And they leave with their masters, and and, right. and they have options in life. Right. And uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, he, great person. Um, like I said, I know he wants to win the championship badly. Uh, and, and he surrounds himself with ten other pit bull coaches because they pit bulls. We ready to bite some people's heads off. We ain't scared of nobody. Everybody know I'm a pit bull. I don't care. I'm. I, look, let's go. You know. <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to get back on the field and you know I, I tell Coach put me give me some pay I got at least one or two plays left who is all right so you've known Dante for a while correct and Dante the stars aligned and everything worked out and then he is now at USC um just in your words what is what is his impact why is why is somebody like Dante regarded as an elite recruiter, one of the best in the nation? And what is his impact been immediately for the University of Southern California? Well, first of all, I – they always say Dante and a recruiter to him. I think that's not the best thing that he, he brings to the table. I think he's one of the best DB coaches in the country, if not the best DB coach in the country, I would, we would go. We would go. We would definitely follow up with that part for sure. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, if you can go back from San Jose State, I mean, his everywhere he's been, the DBs have improved. Um, I mean, as a recruiter, he's just relentless. And you know, we used to before I, of course, we worked at USC. We might go out to dinner. And you know, we might be a couple of our buddies. He might be sitting there, and he might not—he might not say—he might not say a word. He might looking down on his phone, just texting, texting, texting. He's relentless, mm. relentless. That is the key. He's relentless and he's genuine, and he's himself. You know, everybody. Is, there's no sales job in recruiting. Is you like these these recruits? They know who's fake. They know who's trying to be somebody they're not. You know, recruits aren't dumb. They can smell it from a mile away, and if mm. they don't smell it by the end of the recruiting process, they go smell it. Uh, but he's just relentless. He's truthful. He's honest. You know, he 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 doesn't just put a blanket recruiting thing. He has an individual plan for each kid um, that he recruits. Uh, and like I said, we're just so fortunate to have him. Uh, I think he's a future defensive coordinator. I think he's a future head coach, uh, you know. And, uh, you know, he came to SC to win championships. Like, he, like, I know what he's about, you know. He wouldn't have came here. He wouldn't have come to USC if um, he didn't think he could win the championship. Yeah. Because they had a great thing going at Oregon. You know, they just won yeah. the Rose Bowl. They got a great team. Uh, uh, you know, that they're doing good things. Um, but, you know, we know what we got. We hit a home run uh, with Dante, with, with T.O., with Vic, uh, with Craig. Um, you know, and, I, I, you know, another hire that people kind of just don't talk about um, yeah. is, you know, is hiring, uh, you know, Spencer, Spencer Harris. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think he's a future GM. I mean, you know, I, I guess they, everybody, I guess I, I'm high on everybody, but I know that 
we we we're talented. We're super. We got a lot, we got a superstar crew in the building right now, and uh, you know Spence, you know for, with his organization skills, uh, you know put in the recruiting department and then working with with uh, uh, Dante Vic, you know and like I said that hey Dante comes up with things that I've you know he'll he'll think of something and I'll be like man how where did you come up with that you know creative ideas but we're just a well-oiled machine right now and, and great been, chemistry and uh, everybody's on the same page. There, there have been some coaches that, that have come through USC and, and, and even not USC that, that I've run across that, that kind of separate themselves in that, you know, like Dante, for example, Dante is, is your cornerbacks coach at USC, but, but, and, and Brian Ellis, for example, another example, he he knew Probably. everything. I mean, those are guys that know everything that's going on with the football program. They don't. It's not just their position group. It's it, it's so impressive. And that, and isn't that part of what separates you know somebody like yeah. Dante? And, oh, sorry. Hello, 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 hello. My, my food's here. <laughs> well, you're not in LA. Like we're on curfew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, get it. He was at the door. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Is that a first mark? Is that a first? <laughs> On this show, yes. Yeah, yeah. that got to be a first. Yeah. We can put our we can put I, our hey, Liz, we know it's not the bill collectors because it's too late for the bill collectors to call, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh um what, what was go the get question? My food. Okay, well, Mark, what was the question? <laughs> Wait till he come back and edit this part out. Yeah, it oh, we're matter. not gonna edit this part out. <laughs> you, you were talking was, about Dante. you were talking about Dante and what he's bringing to the table and, and some of the creativity. Oh yeah. yeah. So we, we can just thing, go you know off and, of that. And, yeah, and one thing people don't know is, you know, a lot of time recruiting recruit recruiting is about who has the best relationship with the player. Right. And it can it might not be the position coach. I think that's one thing about Dante. He has relationships with all different types, you know, position groups. Um, Kerry has relationships with all – people just understand. Kerry's recruited a lot of players that weren't his position. Right. That he never gets the credit for. Um, and, you know, the great, the good recruiters, the great recruiters, uh, Mike Jinks is one of them who recruits all different, different uh, 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 position groups. The good ones can re – they build relationships. It's not just positional relationships. It's people relationships. It's – and those are the great recruiters because it's not just about, okay, I'm – you know, I'm your coach, but it's like, look, I'm I'm on the staff. I'm here. I'm all – my door is always going to be open. The guy who's going to coach you is going to be a great – is a great person because sometimes a certain coach might not be able to communicate to a certain kid, but – Another coach communicate the kids and let them know. Look, he's a good guy. He, he might not be able. He might. He might not. You know, play video games with you all night, or you right. know. But he's gonna get you to where you need to go. And right. a lot of times, kids are short sighted because all they want, you know, when they're in recruiting, they just want somebody that's their friend. And I always tell you, your friend don't get you. You know, your friend don't get you to the to the to where you need to go. You know. You, you, you surround yourself with too many yes men or people who ain't going to push you to be great. You want somebody who's going to push you to be great. Right. And, 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 and everybody's your friend. We wouldn't have you on our team, you know, right. but there's a certain line between friendship and teaching you not only how to be a great player, but great student, but also be a great person, great husband, great father, uh, 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 great boyfriend. Right. You know, teaching them a lot of life skills, and sometimes your friends just go, okay. When you get, when you think when you get to to, to college, you playing video games with your position coach. <laughs> okay, so you know when you get to college, that's gonna stop. Right. So, don't base that on your decision to go to college. Right. You, you see know, what I'm saying? I, absolutely. You know, in, in all of our conversations that we've had, one of the, the common denominators in coaching staff. Is the relationship. I, I couldn't hear you, Mark. What'd you say, Mark? That's all right. Scott was being rude with the door. Um, in all of our conversations that we've had with, you know, with players and coaches and anybody who's associated with the program, um, the common denominator has been relationship building. 
and you guys just brought on another piece of the puzzle who has developed relationships throughout some of California with Chris Claiborne, you know, Club 55. Exactly. I thought you were talking about me. Yeah, you too, but you know. What... Scott, Scott, Uncle Scotty got a lot of relationships. <laughs> but Believe me, I... other schools call me and <laughs> say, you <Right. laughs> they're people jealous don't, of you, Scott. People yeah. don't realize how important, you know, even though, you know, Chris can't go off campus to recruit, having him now a part of the team again, um, how important that is. Maybe you can touch on that because of, you know, he's going to be like an octopus. His tentacles are going to be going in so many different directions and how it touches the program. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. CC's always been uh, a friend of the, the program. Right. Uh, people don't know, you know, CC was in school, you know, people every Monday, you know, CC would be in the linebackers room watching film. And, uh, you know, just breaking down film, watching film, you know, you know, some of the young guys, uh, younger coaches like Mike and Mike Hutch and myself and uh, some other defensive coaches, they would sit in there and he would, you know, just talk, give them, you know, uh, what he's seen on film just from his side perspective. Uh, but he's always been uh, a friend of the program. Anytime. You know, he'd come by, we had, you know, we had a recruit on campus. He would be there to talk. He always was a mentor for our current players. Um, and this is before he got to SC. So I can't even imagine, you know, you getting, uh, you know, first round draft pick, Buckets Award winner, uh, you know, one of the greatest, play, you know, great players to come out of California. I mean, come out of, you know, Southern California. Uh, and you're adding that to what we already have, I mean, it's just icing on top of the cake. Uh, I commend Mike, Brandon, Clay uh, uh, for doing that. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and, and CC, humble guy. You know, when I used to go on the road, um, I used to always stop by Calabasas. And we would always, you know, have our time, you know, when you're on the, when you're on the road recruit, you know, your day's planned. Cause you got home visits, so you got to get somewhere, you know, at nighttime for six or seven o'clock home visits. So when you're visiting schools during the day, uh, you know, you can only stay. Especially we're not actively recruiting a kid, or they don't have a kid for that year. Uh, you know, you just stop by because you can't see the younger kids uh, when you pop by. So you talk to the folks. And every time I went by uh, Calabasas, man, me and C would sit there and talk for uh, for hours. You know. Um, you know, big cigar smoker, you know, I, I love cigars, uh, and, uh, you know, j just great person, uh, and I think he's gonna bring a lot to the table. You know, you said, uh, Chris will be the icing, what's that make Hayes, the sprinkles, man, because I didn't see Hayes that high from a mile away. Well, well, first of all, let me just tell you something, Hayes, Hayes just followed me on Twitter, uh, like three days ago, so I already got a little issue with him, you know. Uh, Boy, still in the league like three days ago, man. <laughs> you know, Hayes. <laughs> I call him Hollywood Hayes, baby. You know, no, nah, <laughs> you know, we're, we're from the same uh, district. Uh, right, right. Even though I got it right there. Matter of fact, I could probably see a school from for right now. You know, one thing about Hayes, people don't. He got one of the biggest hearts. You know, he does, he does his youth program that I attended every year. He used to bring my son out. He was one years old. I got, still got videos. He just started walking, and, and Hayes got him going through the, the ladder drills. Uh, but he would bring all the USC players, current, f former, uh, to Crenshaw High to do his youth camp uh, and give back to the kids. You know, and, and, and for a young man to have that vision, to give back to the community, you know, and and, and – and, you know, that's why I love people from my neighborhood. You know, we're all about giving back to the community and uplifting the community and, and, and giving people opportunity that maybe not had the best, the best opportunity and letting them know to keep fighting. Even though, you know, you're getting tired and it don't look like you're moving, but you got to keep fighting because you never know if you give up, you're never going to have an opportunity. You got to keep going and, 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 and then, you know, then hopefully opportunity, you know, arises. But... Hayes, you know, I had a, I had a, a kid's parent 
text me, you know, we hired Hayes, like, man, you know, Hayes is family friend, love him to death. Uh, so I know Hayes is going to bring something. Now, I can't wait till we get out of practice and, you know, between, between 55, Hayes, and <laughs> the guy, and then we got the guy that, that Saquon slipped and he fell on top, a.k.a. Mike Hutchins. Uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out who the best linebacker because you know they they I was they just, all think they were they all think they were good. You know, we got generational <laughs> linebacker talent coaching at SC right now. That's you, yeah, yeah, and and To you know now I, I got to see To's video because I got to see where To played uh, linebacker at because I want to know who he was tackling. But uh, he's a hell of a coach. Though. That's my guy. That's my guy. But uh, hey, I gotta ask you. Uh -huh. About, you know, the new staff, we've, we've touched on this new stuff and the, the talked about the energy that's being brought to, to the, the table with, with the coaches, with recruiting and, and, and with coaching too. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm talking to, to somebody today and they were saying on how you guys got the kids and the parents, maybe it was just the parents on Zoom calls with Clay Helton so they could communicate with each other, like multiple. Is, is, is that a new approach? I mean, is that a byproduct of what we're going through right now, or was that something that was in? Yeah, I mean, right now you got to think outside the box. Uh, um, we have done that. I don't know how much, you know, everything's compliant, so I don't know yeah. what I can talk about, what I can't talk about. But, uh, I mean, we use everything from virtual tours to uh, Zoom calls, uh, uh, you know, Zoom meetings, uh, FaceTime, um, you know, and, and this is the thing. I, I, me being on both sides of the aisle, coming from B2G, I understand these kids are getting hammered by other schools. You know, I always tell our coaches, yeah. we're not the only school calling. Mm -hmm. So you got to, you, 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 you have to know, you know, most kids don't, don't have them on, you know, they're not going to sit on there for an hour. You know, keep it short, sweet, straight to the point, because they're getting like right now. It, it uh, coaches can call kids unlimited. These, you know, well, well, some coaches are still at home. Some coaches aren't, but nobody's around kids right now. So all they're thinking about is recruiting, and they're just blowing these kids' phones up. And kids don't want to hear, you know, after about the tenth time. They don't want to hear, oh, man, you're the greatest. You're going to change our program. You're... Nah, they want to hear, you know, what do you feel about these situations going on in life? You know, where do you stand? Uh, how are you going to make me a better person? How do you want to make me a man? You, you got to talk about life and not just about football. And the problem with some coaches is their whole, their whole life is football. So they don't have anything else to talk about. And the ones who have had a life or do have a life do know there's more to life than football. They're the successful ones because mm -hmm. they can communicate to kids. <clears throat> everything's not X's and O's. Some, some coaches, that's all they can do is talk about X's and O's. And, okay, that's cool, but I, there's more to me. I'm, I'm more than an athlete, uh, like LeBron always said. So, uh, you know, I, you, I, I try to keep it short, sweet, uh, you know, with the kids, just knowing that they're getting hounded and just be straight to the point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything doesn't have to always be about football. You know? you're, you're, you, you, you've talked to multiple people that work at other programs in, in similar mm -hmm. capacities or other coaches at, at, at other schools. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious if, if you've had any feedback from, from, from your fellow dudes and maybe, maybe women too that are, uh, that are working in recruiting offices. Uh, over the last month or so, the last couple of months on what you're doing. Are, are they wondering what you guys are doing too? Uh, I've had some, some of our uh, competitors say, okay, you guys have done a great job. And this is the thing. What we've done so far is nothing, you know, until that confetti is, 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 is floating on top of my head. None of this stuff matters. And none of this stuff means anything. But it's you still know. happening, so it does matter. No, it's that, happening. It's aspect. a good start. It's a good start. But you can't get complacent. You got to, you know, okay, I want more. We want more. 
I want championships. So, but you know, it's it's good, but you don't win championship in June. So, you know, I because this is the thing, it's been a flip side when I'll I'll text uh another coach, like, yeah, it's June. Yeah, you got that kid. I'm gonna try to flip him, or we're gonna try to flip him. So, because this is the thing, now that kids when kids commit, now a lot of these schools know who to target. A lot of these schools negative recruit. Um, one thing about me, I don't I don't believe I have to. First of all, this is LA, the greatest city in the world. Uh, if you don't want to be here, then we don't want you. Like, yeah. are you serious? We're, we're paying you. And what I mean by paying you, we're giving you a stipend every month. We're giving you a scholarship, uh, uh, over a million dollar scholarship. We're housing you. You get to live in the greatest city. It's 70 degrees. You, you're around Lakers, Dodgers. You're around beautiful people, beautiful women. Uh, you get in the greatest education in the world. And you telling me that you want to go to this little college town or this, then you ain't meant, meant for this. Because only the best come to USC, period. And and that's how I look at it. You know, if you want to go somewhere cool, we're going to beat you, period. And that's that's how I look at it. Um, but we're doing a great job. We got to keep it going. Um, can't never be satisfied. Uh, and I'm just glad that people are seeing, you know, what's going on at SC. And, mm -hmm. and people are giving us, uh, you know, they 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 have their open ears. They're listening to what we have to offer. Um, like I said, I would never say anything bad about another school. I'm gonna state facts. You ain't got no championship. You ain't got no championship. They ain't hating. That's just facts. <laughs> you know. If, if 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 we got more draft right here, baby. This is how many championships you got, got right here. Yeah, we got more. Well, I I'm not, many we got that. Many. I'm not getting into that. I'm not <laughs> no, getting into I've always that. wanted to do that. It's not ground zero. No. It, exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. it's, it's 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 other schools with with no championships. You know, you know, but but we USC, and I, I think you know me being from LA. I guess I got a little. I move a little different, so. You might call it cocky arrogance. No, I just believe that I believe in myself. I believe in my ability. I believe in my team. I believe in my coaches. So I, I think we're gonna win every game. We might not, but you can't you can't tell 